Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I am going to be starting a small series on how to make a board game junk journal. If you have not seen any of my videos before, I have made Candyland junk journals in the past using Candyland boards um, recycled from games that people have given me or that I found at thrift stores and usually they're in pretty bad shape or they have lots of pieces missing so I just am upcycling them and so I wanted to show you how you can make one of your own it's actually pretty simple and pretty you know similar to how you make uh, any kind of junk journal really but I just wanted to show you how I make mine I've had requests for that so um, the things that I have gathered with me today I have two different Candyland games and you can use different generations of a Candyland game and I'll tell you how to go about doing that because the older versions of Candyland the board game is folded in half and then the newer ones like this style here are folded in quarters and it actually makes it a little bit easier but I'll show you both ways like where I cut it off and everything and then I have some things here that I've gathered from my stash I have a bunch of ribbons and trims that I thought would go well I have rickrack here I have three binder rings and I actually will probably find some these are one inch and I I would like them to be an inch and a half I think um, I don't have any that size right now but I'm gonna use these just for today's video making the cover so this will be the first part making the cover and then I will go into putting together the signatures and then possibly like making a tassel or a charm or something like that and embellishments so this will this will be probably three videos long so just so you know that but I have one inch binder rings and I'm hoping to get an inch and a half because the next size up that I have are two inches and I think that would be way too big so anyway I have two fabrics I actually have a Candyland fabric that I found and I think it was either on Etsy or eBay but um, yeah I thought that was pretty cool I haven't used it yet and then I have this polka dot it's like a rainbow polka dot that I picked up at the Dollar Tree of all places so I'm gonna coordinate that I think this will be on the inside like the the edge of the book cover and then this will be on the back and then I'm not sure I'll I'll have to see what my combination is but definitely probably want this either on the inside covers or the outside back and then I have these papers that I want to use as well either on I think on the inside and then I'll make a, a library pocket I think out of this one or the other way around but these are some papers that I found at Joann's they're American Crafts and they just go perfectly with it just all the little candies so yeah let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to make the cover of a board game book all right to start off I'm just showing you this newer Candyland game. It folds up into four sections. And so I'm going to use a box knife and a ruler that has a metal edge along the side of it. This is a wood ruler, but it has that metal edge. And I'm just cutting it off there where it folds. I'm gonna be using the top part of the game board, the part that has Candyland, the title there, and then the back, the other side will be the back of the book. This is about seven and a half inches wide. And then I just used the height of however tall it was at the head, the fold. So I'm doing a similar thing on this board. I'm cutting it off at the halfway mark there where it folds. This board is a lot thicker and a really dense chipboard or whatever you want to call it super super hard to I had to really work at it to get it cut through with the box cutter but I got it through 
and I'm cutting it at 8 inches wide which is a little bit wider than the other one but I wanted to be able to include that whole title up there and then have a little bit of an edge on the left side so that I, can, that I could add my fabric. I'm li I lined it up on my cutting mat so that I could see my inch mark at the top there and go all the way through but you can see that I have to just keep going it over and over and over to get it to cut I did it a few swipes on this side and then I turned it over eventually to finish cutting it so you definitely want to make sure that your cutting knife is a sharp really sharp and this one was pretty sharp. I had changed it not too long ago, but it still took a long time, several swipes to be able to cut through it. So now I'm on my other side of my board and I'm cutting it down to 8 inches wide as well. Periodically check the top of your box knife and make sure that you don't have any scraggly pieces caught on the end because that could affect the way that it's cutting as well. That middle piece you can use as a bookmark or whatever. As I pull apart this fabric here, I definitely am going to use this. I don't know where quite yet. I know on along the edge I think on the outside cover there but first I want to cover the insides with my paper so I'm basically going to be cutting this making it six inches wide since it is a 12 by 12 piece of paper and then the rest of the width that it doesn't cover I will then use the fabric to cover that so I'm cutting off a little bit on the bottom. I should have had a pencil and marked it down there, but you pretty much want to make it the height of the height of your cover piece and then cut it at six inches. If you want to you cover the whole entire inside with the paper, you can do that as well. But I knew that I would be adding the fabric, so I didn't need to go all the way over. I did leave a little bit of a border so that the that blue from the back side of the board would show. And I'm taking my tacky glue here, smushing it around all over the paper so it doesn't bubble, and then putting it down on the board. I use tacky glue for pretty much everything, so I'm just used to that. I know people don't, you know, like to use wet glue on thin paper like this but it works for me if you want to use a double-sided tape you could use that as well or like a Tombow glue or any other kind of liquid glue I suppose Mod Podge I'm not sure that may work I'm not I don't know it may bubble up the fat might be a little bit too wet I don't know anyway I'm putting them both down so now I know about how much fabric I'll need to cover on that inside part. On the back cover I decided to add the Candyland fabric. I'm cutting off the salvage edge there so and then I'm trying to determine what part of this fabric I want to be on here. And I definitely want the full Candyland title showing there, so I'm just going to cut that little extra piece off. I believe I went in about two inches. And then I'm folding it around so I can figure out how wide I need to cut my fabric. So 
so I'm just cutting it so that I have three of the Candyland titles showing and then cutting it up off at the top leaving a little bit of edge along the bottom and the top so I have enough room to fold it under to make a nice crisp edge at the bottom and on the top. Now it's up to you how far you want to cover that board. You could just go like maybe a half an inch maybe. You want enough so that it will wrap around and stay. But I decided to go a little bit further in just because I wanted to be able to see the fabric. I love that Candyland fabric. So now I'm adding glue and smooshing that all around and putting a little bit at the top so that I could fold my fabric and have a nice edge at the top there. Or it's actually at the bottom. <laughs> but I will do that on the top and the bottom. So now I'm trimming that so it's even and then I will go ahead and fold that in and just add a little bit more glue there so it will stay. And then I'm just going to wrap it around, add my glue. I always like to smooth it out so that it's not bubbly. And this fabric is a decent fabric, so you don't see too much through it. It's not real thin, so I like that fact about it. And you just want to smooth, put your fabric down on top of the glue and smooth it out. Add more if you need to adjust. I, it's a little bit crooked, but by the time I put down my trim and everything, it it looked just fine. And now I want to add a little piece of the, well, I added the, I'll add a little bit of that polka dot, I think on the inside. I thought maybe I would add it here, but then that would be just covering up too much of the actual board game. So I added some Rick Rack. I'll set that to the side and work on the others while that dries. Now I wanted to add this little portion of the Candyland fabric just on the inside of this and then I'll use the polka dot fabric to go to wrap around the edge. And as I said, this fabric I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and it's actually a pretty good quality fabric. And I just thought it went perfect with the theme <laughs> and the colors, the rainbow colors. I just love that. So I cut off, it's probably about a two inch piece, and the Candyland piece is around an inch and a half. I left myself a little bit of an edge to the left side of the Candyland title, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue along the edge and at the top and the bottom to fold it and make a crisp edge there. I'll just add a, a strip of glue there and smooth it out with my finger and then add that piece on, lining it up as best as I can. And then I'm going to wrap it around to the other side. It wasn't quite, quite short enough, so I tightened it up a little bit there. And then I'm going to just glue it on the other side. Sure all the bubbles are pressed out and then I'm going to add this Candyland piece. 
And I'll do the same thing. I'll fold in the top and the bottom edge. That was a little bit too long, so I trimmed a piece off and then I'm doing the same thing with the fold. Now at the other end, I'm going to do the fold again. It's just the same process for all these little pieces. I'm going to add rickrack on this side of the Candyland part and then on the other seam I'm going to use some ribbon and you'll see that here in a second. I have this hot pink and white polka dot. I thought maybe I would use that. Um, it was a Christmas ribbon and it has wire in it so I didn't, wasn't really liking it and the middle was a little bit sheer but I, I would like to find some candy cane ribbon that isn't sheer like isn't sheer or doesn't have wire so I ended up using this polka dot fat, uh, polka dot ribbon and thought that looked really nice So while that front cover is drying, I'm going to add some rickrack to the back cover and just do the same as what I've done for all of them. You can definitely use ribbon on this, another piece of fabric, or a strip of paper. It's just up to you what you want to use to embellish your cover. Now on the inside front cover, I want to add a library pocket. So I'm going to make that using this really cute candy paper. And I'm going to cut a strip five inches wide. And then I'm going to fold it up from the bottom about three inches and then cut off around three inches off the top. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and score it a half an inch on each side. And then starting at the top part, I'm going to cut the little section out from the top down to that fold. And then trim at an angle at the bottom there so that I could fold my pocket and fold the edges around to the back. I'm using my envelope maker to cut a little section on the front pocket and then I rounded the corners at the top. Now I'm just trying to decide how I want to decorate this. So I had a scrap of the rainbow paper and then first I'm going to glue my pocket down and then I'll decorate it. So I glued the flaps down and then added some glue on the back. Smooth it out of course and then place it where I want it on the inside cover. And then I want to use that strip, but I also want to use some of the polka dot fabric. So I'm just going to tear this. It tears pretty well, so I just cut a little piece. And then I also actually didn't use that piece because I wanted it to be torn on both sides. And so I'm tearing another piece here. I will use that other piece within the book 
maybe to make little fabric pulls or whatever on the pages. So I just made it a little bit wider than that rainbow paper strip so that the polka dot would poke out the sides. And then I'm gluing that down and then also gluing the paper down. You could also stitch this with your sewing machine if you wanted to add that texture onto it as well. And I want to put a piece, one of the game pieces down here. So I was going through all the little cards and found the one with the Candyland guy or the candy cane guy. So I'm just cutting him out and I'll glue him right down in the center. So now here you have a perfect pocket for the inside cover. And then I'm turning it over. I'm going to add my Rick Rack to the front cover. So I kind of do this in stages so that I can let one side dry so it doesn't mess up when I turn it over. So now you're going to use, I'm using a crocodile, but I'm using the larger hole and punching three holes. I went in about an inch and a half on the ends and then right in the middle. The crocodile can go through really thick layers and it's really easy, a lot easier than a regular hole punch. Now I'm going to line up the front with the back and use a pen and just make marks through the holes onto the back so that I know where to cut it. And my pen wasn't working at first so I had to get it flowing there. <laughs> and now I have my marks so I can go in and punch the holes. If you don't have a crocodile, I will put a link for that down below. I've used mine so many times you do not know, but a crocodile has two size holes to punch through several layers or really thick layers, and then it also has, you can use it on eyelets, so to press your eyelets. So now I am using my binder rings and I'm putting them through both holes in the back and the front. And this is how the book is going to be held together. So all my pages, if you come back and watch the second part of this series, I'll show you how to put the pages together in there. And now I'm trying to, I'm laying out some items to embellish the cover. And so I picked out two of the playing cards and then I made this really cute lollipop on my Cricut. I will put a link down below for the SVG file that I found. It was a free file online and I just brought that into Design Space and made the lollipop. Now I'm taking my various ribbons and trims and tying just ran, well, there was a method to my madness, but you can just add these wherever you want. I put the pink polka dot on the top and the bottom binder rings, and then I put, uh, I think it was, well you'll see it here, I was just like methodically putting these in random places. That doesn't make sense, but anyway, I put one of the, <laughs> it totally doesn't make sense, but I did kind of try to make it even, but then, you know, I put the two the bottom and the top and then that ribbon in the middle now I'm gonna take my rainbow and add that in the middle and then I have the rainbow polka dot ribbon and I'll just add that on the top and the bottom so essentially there are two ribbons on each binder ring and then I also went in with some fiber it was like a rainbow colored fiber and put that on each of the binder rings so that just added a little bit of a different texture. But you can add as many or as few ribbons or trims to the binder rings as you want. 
And then of course, once we get the book full of the pages and all of the ribbons and trims that are sewn onto the pages, you'll see a lot more texture coming out the side and the top of the book as well. Now first I thought I wanted to use this trim, but it ended up being a wired trim, so I found this rainbow. And it's an eyelash, and then it has a chenille piece that's wrapped around in it, so it's kind of a combination. And I think it, it looks really cute with this. So I just double knot it. And I did, I think I double knotted all of the ribbons. I love using the binder rings to make books because it's faster than trying to do a typical pamphlet stitch and making the making the spine of the book. And I don't know, it just looks whimsical and I like it with the board game. So yeah, and now I'm going to be making a little charm out of the game gingerbread man piece that comes in the Candyland game and I'm taking some E6000 adding it to a little I don't know what they're called they remind me of it's a little piece that has a hole in the end and it's kind of like a little piece that you can find on the back of a picture frame <laughs> But you can find these in the jewelry finding section, like at Michael's or Joanne's. So I glued that to the back, leaving the hole poking out the top of the head so you can add a, add a ring to it. And then I have a lobster clasp and one of the rings, and I added that to the top, so it made it a little charm. The last thing I want to do is add a pocket to the back cover and so I used one of the scrap pieces left over from that candy paper. I rounded two corners and then added glue on three sides just to make a, a simple pocket. And that is basically completes our cover so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you did, leave me a comment and subscribe, come back for the next installment here. Um, oh, I'm just adding my lobster clasp on the front and it just makes a super cute cover. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment and I'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.